babies. They are babies. No, I don't mean the babies. I mean the mothers. They look like babies. It's just that my father... If he ever found out... Hey, don't you think it's a little late to be worrying about what your father thinks? You're a father now, too, so... Twelve-year-old girl drops out of school because she's pregnant and her classmates are making fun of her. I mean, twelve years old, what's going on with kids today? Uh, it's just a different world today. Sex is being thrown at them all the time. Movies, television. Their bodies just get ahead of their minds. They know what's going on, all right. I mean, you don't get pregnant from eating candy. Oh, come on. How much did you know about sex when you were 11 or 12? Come on, how much did you know? Well, things are different when I was a kid. We didn't talk about sex, let alone see it on television every time you turned around. I thought that's what I just said. Where are we going, anyway? We'll see some of those kids you were just reading about. Hello. I'm Joyce Blair. Hi, I'm Jonathan Smith. This is Mark Gordon. Oh. We're not used to having men on the premises. But now that it looks like the new wing's going to be built, it's time we get used to a few men around. You could not have called at a better time, Mr. Smith. Hey, you mentioned on the phone something about clearing brush and so forth. Yeah, the whole place is a little run down. We've been too busy planning the new wing and running the daycare center to clean up outside. You run a daycare center? Yeah, we started a few years ago when the high schools became very concerned about the horrendous dropout rate among teenage mothers. You know, so many of the girls want to keep their babies, but keeping a baby and going to school, it's not easy, especially when there's little family support. So what we do is, if a girl wants to stay in high school, we take care of her baby and, uh, if possible, even get her transportation to school. Joyce? Yeah? What is it, Sandy? Johnny's running a little fever. Does glands feel swollen to you? Oh, let me see. Let me see. Sandy's one of our mothers who lives here in the home. She's our prize student. She's up for a scholarship to college. Congratulations. Well, I haven't got anything yet. But whatever happens, I owe it to Joyce in this place. If it weren't for them, I don't know where we'd be. I think he's okay. Did you give him something for his fever? Yeah. 
You know, just keep an eye on his fever and I'll look in on you later, okay? Thanks. Okay, come on. Let me show you around the place. All right. attention. They're not dolls you put in the corner when you're finished playing. I've told you before, Andrea, Pemberton is not a place for party girls. It's a place where young mothers learn to be good mothers. Thanks. Now, take her to the nursery. She, she needs to be changed. You think I was too hard on her, Mr. Gordon? I mean, they're so young, you know? She's almost 19 years old. Compared to the rest of the girls around here, she's an old woman. She's restless. She thinks only about herself. She acts like a baby. The difference is she happens to be a mother. Well, uh, if you start uh, clearing along this side of the house here and work your way to the back, there's a television newsman coming out to interview me today about the new wing, and I want the old place looking good. <laughs> and there's some rakes and things in the shed. The girls started a garden, but they stopped it last year when it looked as if the place might be foreclosed on. Why would anybody want to foreclose on a place like this? A real estate developer wanted to build condominiums. If the community hadn't come to the rescue, half the babies you saw today would be in foster homes or worse. Hmm. Well, I'll let you get started. OK. Oh, and uh, good luck with your interview. Oh, oh thanks. I'll need it. Try not to be nervous. Charlie? All right, everybody quiet. Let's keep it down. How many mothers do you have here at Pemberton, Miss Blair? With the new wing, we'll be licensed for 25. Uh, and there's a waiting list. What is it that you and uh, the others here want to accomplish with these girls? Well, we make sure that the young women realize that their baby is a person a human being just like themselves who, who need to be loved and looked after. And then we teach them parenting skills to show them how to love and look after their children. We also have sex education so that the young women won't make the same mistakes again. We try to teach them that, that sex is not a sport or a game and that the consequences can be very real. Well, this is primarily a residential uh, neighborhood. How do you get along with your neighbors? It wasn't easy for the first year or two. When Mrs. Pemberton left us the house, I, I think uh, some of the neighbors thought that she was taking revenge on them. But over the past few years, uh, some of our largest contributors are from this area. As the uh, Holmes director, you're also in charge of fundraising, aren't you? Mm -hmm. Yes, I am. And you're also in charge of the uh, construction for the new wing, aren't you? Yes, along with the board. Isn't it true, uh, Miss Blair, that recently you've been dating a Mr. Clint Wheeler, owner of Wheeler Construction, the same firm that you chose to build the new wing? I could hardly call it dating. Well, have you or have you not been out with Mr. Wheeler in the evening? Uh, yes, to, uh, to dis uh, discuss the, uh, the construction. Miss Blair, isn't it true that you were once arrested for grand theft? Well, I have here a copy of a police report. It says that you stole $450 from a social agency you once worked for. That was a mistake. I, I didn't steal that money. I, I had borrowed it. I didn't have time to, to get a voucher. Under the circumstances, Miss Blair, don't you think it would be better if you stepped down and let someone else be in charge of fundraising here at Pemberton? Uh, that would be up to the board of directors. From the Pemberton home for young mothers, this is Dan Rivers, Channel 11 News. Charlie, that's it. Thanks for your time, Miss Blair.
Well, have you or have you not been out with Mr. Wheeler in the evening? Uh, yes, to, uh, to dis uh, discuss the, uh, the construction. Miss Blair, isn't it true that you were once arrested for grand theft? Uh, what? Well, I have here a copy of a police report. It says that you stole $450 from a social agency you once worked for. She didn't have a chance once I pulled out that arrest report. You're terrific, Dad. You've got to always keep the subject off balance and on camera. <laughs> Mr. Rivers? That would be up to the board of directors. How did you get in here? Uh, that doesn't matter. Look, Joyce Blair would like to clarify a couple of her answers. That's why I came down here, to find out if you could come back out to the home, or Joyce could come in here to the studio if you'd like. Well, I'm sorry, pal. Uh, television news isn't like the movies. You only get one take here. Is that why you're in here dumping over your questions? Nobody's perfect. Shut up, Charlie. All right. All right, what's the game here? Well, there's no game. Joyce Blair spent most of her life helping the people in her community. She deserves a chance to defend herself. Look, all she did was borrow the money to help a couple of starving families. She paid it right back. Charges were dropped. This is a news station. It's not a public relations firm. Now, the lady ran a large charity in this community. She was arrested for grand theft. She dated the contractor, and I think the public has a right to know these facts. That's why we have the First Amendment in this country. No, no, the First Amendment guarantees freedom of the press, not freedom to report gossip and half-truths as facts. <laughs> well, I've been sued before, usually by lawyers, not uh, gardeners. The good news is that I have yet to back off a story. Look, all she is asking is the right to tell her side of it. Another day can't make any difference. Except to the girls at Pemberton. I told you, she's had her chance. The story runs tonight. Now, please, why don't you get out of here? friend, someone fun. Not like there's none over here. What about Yolanda? She'll cry herself to sleep soon enough. I thought maybe you could watch her for me. Yeah? Okay. Thanks. Hmm. Not bad for an old lady, huh? Andrea, what would you do if you didn't have Yolanda? Well, I wouldn't be hanging in with those losers at night school. How about you? What would you do if you didn't have Johnny? Oh, I'd be going to parties, worrying about what to wear, fighting with my mom. It seems so long ago. I love Johnny so much. I should be back by 10, unless I get lucky. Miss Blair. Isn't it true that you were once arrested for grand theft? Uh, what? Well, I have here a copy of a police report. It says that you stole $450 from a social agency you once worked for. That was a mistake. I, I didn't steal that money. I, I had borrowed it. I didn't have time to, to get a voucher. Under the circumstances, Miss Blair, don't you think it would be better if you stepped down and let someone else be in charge of fundraising here at Pemberton? That would be up to the board of directors. From the Pemberton home for young mothers, this is Dan Rivers, Channel 11 News. Well, here we go. Yes, Mrs. Hiller. But the charges were dropped. Yes, I, I understand, Mrs. Hiller, but... Oh, 
I'm sorry too, Mrs. Hiller, but it... that was Mrs. Pemberton's sister. She's withdrawing her contribution from the building fund. Hello. Hello, Clint. I know that's not why you went out with me. Look, I know you're married. What are you yelling at me for? It's my reputation, too. Uh, I think I better take that in my office. Uh, Mrs. Welland, would you uh, tell the staff there's going to be an emergency board meeting tomorrow? What's gonna happen, Mr. Smith? Is the home gonna close? I don't know, Sandy. How you doing, Tim? Do I know you? No, not really. My name's Jonathan Smith. I work out at the Pemberton home. Pemberton? Oh. That's the home for young mothers, right? That's right. Well, I'd like to speak to your dad for a minute, if I could. Um, I'm sorry, Mr. Smith. My father doesn't like to be disturbed on weekends. Oh, well, this is pretty important, son. You tell him I can't wait, okay? It's a man from Pemberton. Pemberton? Who are you? This is Jonathan Smith. He... Timmy, I told you I had some work to do. Hey, it wasn't the boy's fault. I told him it was urgent. Oh, you did, huh? Run along, Timmy. I said I'd take care of it, Timmy. Now that you've interrupted me, Mr. Smith, what is it you want that seems so urgent? I want you to see to it that the Pemberton home stays open. What makes you think I can do that, even if I wanted to? Because you control the mortgage on the property. Who told you that? I have sources in very high places. You do, huh? Well, if your sources are so good, you must also know that I've been trying to develop that piece for the last two years. And from what I heard on television last night, I'm finally going to get my chance. I don't you think there are some things in this world more important than money? Name one. Family. That's why I make money, Mr. Smith, to provide for my family. And believe me, I take very good care of them. Well, there's a lot of girls in that home who don't have a family to take care of them. I'm in the real estate business, mister, not the family business. We're all in the family business, Mr. Brent. We're getting no place, and I've got work to do. Since when are you so interested in my affairs? No answer, huh? I want you to show Mr. Smith out right now. from our school who I, I think went to Pemberton. Her name's Sandy. Sandy Clark. Oh, sure, Sandy. She's doing fine. She's one of Pemberton's best students. <laughs> she always was smart. And she's got a beautiful baby boy. His name's Johnny. Must be growing pretty fast. Why don't you go out and see for yourself? I'm sure Sandy'd like to see an old friend from school. I'd like to. It'd be nice to see her. And the baby. Timmy, if you want to go to that ball game, you get in here right now and finish your homework. 
I know she'd love it if you came out to see her. I'll try. Maybe next week I... I gotta go. Here you are, Mark. Still the board meeting? Yeah. Been in there for over an hour. What happened? The board is going to do its best to keep Pemberton. What about you? Are you all right? going to be stepping down as its director. You can't leave us, Miss Blair. I'll, I'll still see you. But I can't stay here. Now, if we're going to stand a chance of saving Pemberton, it can't be with me as its director. <laughs> so the guy says, I got a great new hearing aid. He says, what kind is it? 11.30, he hey. says. <laughs> hey, there's my drink. Well, well. It isn't the gardener. I just came down to tell you Joyce Blair resigned this morning. Well, I'm glad to hear uh, Pemberton's board shares my opinion of her qualifications. Uh, the board doesn't, but a lot of the community donors do now. Pemberton lost about half of their financial support after your story ran last night. Hey, wait a minute, friend. Dan reported the facts. He's a reporter. That's his job. Oh, come on. He reported a tip from a developer who wanted the home closed so he could build some condos. Well, it looks like that developer's going to get his wish now. And 25 unwed mothers are going to be out on the street. I thought you told me the tip on the Pemberton lady was on the level. It was. I checked it with the police department myself. Hey, if you check with the police department, then you also know that all the charges against Joyce were dropped. Well, where there's smoke, there's fire. You knew the charges were dropped? Yeah, I knew. Well, why wasn't that in the story? Come on, Harvey, you keep on screaming at me about ratings. I'm giving you ratings, so don't you start giving me ethics. I thought you might like to see this, Dan. Came in this morning's mail. Copy's been sent to every station in town. What's it say, Charlie? Well, it says that Danny boy here has a young friend out at the Pemberton home. Seems he gave a lecture at her high school and invited her down to the station for a tour. Evidently, she was very impressed. You, you don't really believe that I'm the father of this girl's child, do you? Come on, it's obvious that the, the director of Pemberton put her up to this. Well, you've been known to have your share of pretty young admirers. <laughs> I wouldn't miss that press conference for all the names in your little black book, Rivers. You guys aren't really going to go out there, are you? You'd do the same for us, wouldn't you? <laughs> Come on, guys. I mean, this is a phony. You know it is. 
Our job is to inform the people, no matter how distasteful the story. I'll see you out there, Dan. Tell me I can't see her. I said I'm going to talk to her. I'm going to talk to her. You're the one behind this. Behind what? Don't play games with me. Now, where is that girl, Sandy? Sandy Clark? That's right. That's right. I invite her down to the station. Now she's trying to ruin my career. What are you talking about? This. And don't tell me you don't know what this is about. Oh, my God. That's right. It's on all the radio and TV stations. Now, I demand, I demand to see that girl before her press conference this afternoon. Jonathan, I have to talk to Sandy. Would you please escort Mr. Rivers off the property? You know, you won't get away with this, Smith. I'll take a blood test. I'll prove I'm innocent. Oh, come on, Mr. Rivers. You, of all people, ought to know how difficult it is to prove your innocence once the press has found you guilty. in her room. Do you think she's telling the truth? No, I think she's doing this to hurt Dan Rivers. Somehow she thinks it's going to save the home. We have to find her. We have to stop her from doing this. Well, I'll look for her. Why don't you stay here, just in case she comes back? What you're doing isn't going to save the home, you know. It's not going to get Joyce a job back either. Well, it's going to hurt Dan Rivers, all right, but is it really worth it just to get revenge? What I said in those letters is true. Dan Rivers is the father of my baby, and he deserves to be hurt. Oh, come on, that's a lie, and you know it. Come on, Sandy, listen to me. Look, think about what that lie is going to do to you. To your baby, to, to your parents. My parents? When I told my parents I was pregnant, they worried more about what the neighbors would think than they did about me. They wanted me to have an abortion. When I told them I wouldn't, they sent me to Pepperton, and they told people I was away in boarding school. Look, I can't defend your parents. They're gonna have to do that for themselves. All I'm saying is that, that hurt and anger are no excuse for what you're doing. When Johnny was born, they didn't come to the hospital until the third day. Nobody did. If it weren't for Joyce and the people here, if Pepperton closed Mr. Smith, there's no place for us to go. But to accuse an innocent man, no matter how guilty he is of other things, that just isn't the answer. What if there is no answer? Oh, come on, Sandy. You're a good student. Look, the, the answers in life are not that much different from the answers on a test. You work and you study hard and you learn. If you cheat and you give up, every test after that is that much harder. Please don't do this. I appreciate what you say, Mr. Smith, but I'm meeting this report at 5 o'clock. What I make of the county records and your records, there's a good chance you're not the father. Well, you see, I told you I wasn't. But there's a slight chance that you might be. Yeah, but a slight chance isn't good enough here. It's the first intelligent thing you've said all day. <sighs> Look, boss, I admit, I did offer to drive her home, but I swear to you, I did not touch her. Half hour ago, you said you thought she was older. Well, she was. I, I mean, I, I mean, I, I, I thought she was. Look, I don't know what I think anymore. Well, what I think is you better get this mess cleared up by 6 o'clock, or you're going to be out of here. Well, wait, I'm innocent. Damn it, you can't condemn someone who's innocent. Never stopped you. Hey, 
Jim. Mr. Smith. They're having a big press conference later this afternoon at Pemberton. Sandy's gonna name Dan Rivers as the father of her baby. What? Yeah, she thinks it's the only way to save the home. She feels she has no other place to go. That's crazy. If you care about her, Tim, you better get over there before that press conference. Of course I care about her. I, I always have. She knows that. Saying you care about someone is easy, son. Showing you care takes a little more effort. I know that. It's just that my father... If he ever found out... Hey, don't you think it's a little late to be worrying about what your father thinks? You're a father now, too, son. Hey, Tim, you coming, bud? I gotta go, hey. I'll see you. Why do you keep asking me that I told you before? I was afraid to tell you. You damn well should be. I've given you everything, everything you ever wanted. And I ask for one thing in return you respect this family. Dad, I love her. Well, if you love her so much, why did you get her pregnant? Look, son. You know what she's trying to do? She's trying to get you to step forward and say you're the father. She's trying to put the squeeze on you. Besides, how do you know this uh, Dan Rivers isn't really the father, huh? <laughs> you really have people pegged, don't you, Dad? Well, let me tell you something. I am the father. Because neither one of us has been with anyone before. And, and yeah, we made a mistake. And yeah, I, I can walk away from this just like you said. But you know what? I'm not going to. Well, don't you expect any help from me? You got yourself into this. You want to know something else? There's going to be no college this fall. You're going to be working your butt off in some little job just to pay the rent for you, you and your bastard. You're right. You better believe it. You're right, just like you always are, Dad. Except for one thing. I'm going to work my butt off for my son. And no matter what he does with his life, no matter what mistakes he makes, he's not going to be afraid to come to his father. going great for you and now you're gonna go blow it and what for how do you know it's gonna save the school or Joyce's job I don't know but he's not gonna get away with it he's hurt a nice person the only person that ever really cared about me but he's not the father they're gonna find that out how do you know he's not because I know that's all he isn't your type oh really what's my type I am He's 
It's beautiful. He looks just like you. Oh, I don't, I don't think so. I think he looks more like you. Oh, come on. Look at him. He's got the same mouth. Same beautiful face. He's a spitting image of you. Maybe a little. Maybe a lot. She's lucky. He loves her. Hell, I don't blame him. She's a good person. She's real. She deserves to be happy. Doesn't everyone? No. I don't. Why not? Because I am who I am. You ever do like to change? You got your whole life ahead. Baby. He said he loved me. He said he didn't think of me as a little girl. I thought I was so grown up. A man loved me. Then he found that I was pregnant. Now I just want anybody to love me. Anybody. Somebody does love you. Yeah. Who? God. God loves you, Andrea. Jonathan? Yeah? Would you tell them I apologize? That it was all a mistake. Tell them I'm sorry. Thank you. Andrea, I'm getting married. Sandy! Sandy! <laughs> Fathers. Dan. What the hell are you doing calling a press conference? I didn't. Come on, Sandy. What do you mean you didn't? <gasps> <gasps> Sandy! She doesn't even know my name. I'm Andrea. Do you think I want the world to know you're my baby's father? She deserves better than you, and so do I. It means you're not going to say anything? That depends on you, Dan. Look, Andrea, uh, I made a mistake. I know how you feel. I'll set up a trust fund for the kid. I mean, I'll, I'll take care of him. Her. Her. And don't you worry, I'll take care of her. I never want you near her. What do you want? I want you to go up there and publicly apologize to Joyce Blair. I want you to tell them that you knew all along that she was innocent. You just did it to score points for yourself. Andrea, come on. I mean... Look, I, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry it happened, I, but... May I have your attention, please? Let me have your attention. The press conference has been canceled. Oh, Why? Wait, what are you talking about? Listen, what's what's going I'm going sorry for the inconvenience, but I can't answer any questions. Thank you. Oh, Why not? Go up there now. Or I swear I'll get up there and tell them. Andrea, give me a break, will ya? Your history, Dan. Okay. Okay. 
Uh, will everybody hold it a minute? I, I've got something I want to say. Nobody wants to hear I told you, Danny boy. That's not what I'm up here to say, Charlie. I want to apologize to Joyce Blair. Um, I did an interview on the news with Miss Blair where I accused her of wrongdoing. <clears throat> At the time of the interview, I knew she was innocent. I did it... I mean, I, I did it because I, I thought it would make a more sensational interview. For that, I'm... I'm deeply sorry. <laughs> She's not crying. She sure is a cutie. Hey, how come you're not downstairs? Big celebration going on, you know? Yeah, I know. I'm kind of far behind in my work. I've been goofing off a little, but no more. You knew it was Dan, didn't you? Someday, all the right guy will come along. But until then, I'm going to make the best mother and best courtroom reporter you ever saw. Because you were right. Somebody does love me. Somebody very special. See in court, Mom. Yeah.